Hi everyone and welcome for another quick and fun project done in acrylic paints with Michael. <laughs> so as you can see we have a very limited color palette here. This is a pearl pink, pearl, magenta, white, a pearl light blue and I think it was a tail blue. Not sure anymore. As you can also see I've mixed them with quite a bunch of water so they are really much diluted. Behind you can see my canvas board, which is a 40 by 50 centimeter canvas board. I painted it black and made this really stunning concept sketch onto it already. So you can see the ring and a horizontal line. My plan for the first phase was making an unpredictable, cool and fancy background. As it worked pretty well for the acrylic boat painting that I did a couple of weeks ago, I wanted to use the same technique but as you will see in a second, this is going to be a total mess. Total fail. I will show it anyway so that you can perhaps improve on it or can just follow along seeing me struggle with the paint background. Whatever you like, enjoy. <laughs> So what I did is practically wet the canvas, put some of the paint onto this and used my hairdryer to blow it around to give me some kind of randomness in the background, some kind of color transitions and overlapping and I wanted it to look like a space nebula again. But yeah, fail. So what I did not film here in this tape is how I kind of fixed it and therefore I just let everything dry and pretty much used the same technique as I used for one of the latest videos that I uploaded where I did the sunset swipe and painted the space scene nebula around it. So I used a sponge, some solid acrylic paint, so not diluted, and just dabbed it on there, used some kitchen towel and dabbed it on there as well, just to give me the kind of look that I wanted. And this worked out pretty nicely. I wanted this background to transition from the moon that is painting later on um, to transition into the background which is going to look dark like a nebula. So this was my goal. And I must say this was the most stressful part of this painting. Next time I just leave the blowing around part and go with the dabbing instead. <laughs> when this mess was done the rest was pretty simple. When it comes to painting the moon you have endless possibilities. You can take your time and really really paint the moon and all the craters and the color transitions and all the rifts and cliffs that you can see on the moon. You can really spend time on it making this work. But you can also use the method that I used and just go wild. So put a bunch of acrylic paint on there, mostly white, add some kind of different colors into this. So I used a cool gray, a warm gray, a paints gray, a mars black and just yeah, went wild, used a pretty large brush and just made my areas where I wanted the moon to be lighter and darker. And the good thing is you can layer this up. So when you are not satisfied with one area, just let it dry, go over there with the next layer. And as acrylic paint is kind of translucent, especially when it's thinner, then you can see the layer underneath through and you're going to get more interest in the painting after all. So whether you want it to be really detailed or just more like an abstract kind of painting like I did here, the general idea that you're going to paint the moon really transmits to the audience. So whatever way you want to paint it.
Once satisfied with the moon, it was about to paint the foreground. This was pretty simple as it's only black. <laughs> For some kind of interest I decided to paint a tree hanging on a cliff into this painting and I wanted to grab some of the paint for the background to just return into the tree itself. So like a reflection color of the space around it. And this is pretty much it. It went pretty quickly I must say. So not taking the drying times and the mess that it did in the beginning into consideration. I think it was done in about one hour or one and a half hours. So it was a really simple little project. It really was fun. So I can really only encourage you to try it yourself. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you really get a good hang for the paints that you're using and for some effects that you probably have not done before. So I always struggle with realism. So I always want everything to be as perfect, as realistic as it can be. But painting some looser styles as I did here every now and then really helps judging your own skills and what you want to achieve in the end. So I could have spent about five hours, six hours just to paint the moon photorealistically or better realistic than it is here. But is it really needed? So this is a question that I always, always ask myself, especially recently, if I really need to spend those two extra hours to make it look even more realistically. And if so, does it really help the overall impression? Do you also kind of think the same way with your paintings? Let me know in the comments what you think, if you like it as it is, if you probably would have wished it to be more detailed, more realistically, or perhaps the moon really like realistic, so with all the craters and stuff visible, or do you really like this blurred out, more abstract look of the moon itself? I myself must say I really really enjoy these little studies. They are super fun besides the acrylic pouring and the oil color realism paintings which do take a longer time. And it opens up my horizon a bit more. So stepping outside the comfort zone, combining a couple new techniques with things you already know, really it's a fun thing. And I want to explore this road a bit further with coming videos and projects and if you have something on your mind that you want me to test out. Let me know in the comments, I would be happy to make some of them work. And I really look forward to hear what you think about this little project. If you did something like that or if you want to recreate it, I would be happy if you can share me your results on Facebook or Instagram, wherever you are, and let me see what you've created. And now coming to the end, all the usual YouTuber stuff. So if you're new, subscribe to my channel, like the video, share the video with everyone you know. Links and materials that I've used are linked down below in the video description. And yeah, please subscribe and click the bell icon to see my upcoming videos as well. So thank you for your time, thank you for watching, and other than that, I hope to see you in my next videos. <laughs> Have a great day, bye bye!